from my point of view, there's there's lots again going on in this work. But yeah, the 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 predominant feeling I wanted to to get across was this kind of sort of heaviness, kind of moving into something that was almost a bit kind of creepy or a bit horror, like the horror of everything. And and in a weird way, it was a kind of without me seeing it, like a sort of precursor to COVID, you know, and what we all kind of lived through, that sort of isolation and separation and all the lockdowns. Um, but obviously, I, you know, couldn't have predicted that. When I was doing research on you, I was I was I was given this book, and and uh, I, um, I I'm just quite taken with seeing your work in a print. Uh, so um, <laughs> and seeing it in book form, and, and the uh, your the the nature of uh, the high contrast, the uh, kind of uh, black and white that you work with um, yeah. is is just is just wonderful. So if you would like, uh, we can go ahead and transition into that work. I would sure. love. To, to hear a little bit of background on that project, what inspired you to do it, uh, oh, yeah, of course. And so on, and, and kind of uh, give our audience a little background of this. And then maybe you can tell us how we can get one, unless if this is still in print or it's still available. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, as the Islanders I talked about, it was the initial thing was this kind of response to the, the, the Brexit vote and, and the heaviness. Um, but the 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 genesis in a way was kind of much earlier in terms of the atmosphere you know for years i've kind of been like sort of loosely trying to make ideas around this notion of like sunday in this country so i kind of grew up in the midlands and it's very landlocked so often in the winter it seemed to be the sundays were just this gray still and just really kind of like no wind and there was like a heaviness um and then I was, you know, I thought about like the Morrissey song, but every day is like Sunday, um, every day is Lennon <laughs> Gray. So there's obviously this this notion of it, it, this being a thing. Do you know what I mean? And like, and, and, oh, and I didn't know that that song at, at the time. So the, there's that going on. Again, it's this jigsaw puzzle. There's that going on that's been um, bubbling for a while. Then there's the Brexit vote. And then there's thinking about the relationship between my youth and how I perceive the youth how I perceive the futures of the youth to be at the moment or all the time they're living in. So so we have that going on. Um, so it's these, these different elements I start bringing together. But from a simplistic point of view, it's like so I'm photographing young people and I'm photographing in the landscape and I'm just kind of looking for stuff. So, so up until this point, I'd just been working in colour and I actually found, going back on my original stupid statement of black and white's easy um i found it really hard making a transition into showing black and white images like i always preferred them as color images so it took some time to start seeing again in black and white um and it is a way like in terms of workflow with a camera i was just shooting on like raw monochrome so like i was seeing monochrome on the camera which really helped but but it took some time to to do that and for Dilskam I tried shooting in black and white but I preferred it as colour and I was trying to force that and it wasn't working whereas this just inherently worked there was something about it that kind of made sense and it worked as black and white and, and so so I went there so, so in, in terms of the structure of the work it's probably the loosest in terms of narrative and in terms of place so it's really centred on atmosphere and feeling and so the, the work is predominantly it's portraiture that I shot specifically for the project, like young people I knew that I'd either photographed with before or I knew through other people. And like I discussed the, the notion of the project. And again, so they become like archetypes, like stand-ins for the people of their generation. And then I specifically went to some places to shoot the landscape. So you'd have like the the, the the person stood over the cliff. So I wanted this notion of being like an island, looking out to sea. But then unusually at this point, because I 
have built up like an archive of images. There were images that I had in my archive that I was like, well, this would work really well in this project. So I, I you know, there's instances where I pulled them in. Um, for example, Ollie here, I, I think he, I can't remember how old he would have been in this, but um, he's probably kind of mid twenties now. And I kind of knew him since he was maybe like 14 years old because he was the boyfriend of a, a young woman I knew at the time through a mom. So, and now he's, you know, he's a photographer, he's working as a photographer. So it's kind of in a way like you're kind of building these, these relationships. Um, and this was an image that I'd just taken previously that I'd kind of come across in like an, a, an abandoned factory, but I felt like this will work really well in the, in the context of, of this series. And that's the first time I've kind of done this in terms of um, pulling images into into the work from from the wider archive, um, and then again you have like these 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 happy accidents that you, I'm out um, photographing and you come across a door and like 23 and I'm like 23 oh, and then that's the, the the date of the the vote the 23rd so things like that again just you know kind of like happy coincidences. Um, and, and Ruby was a young person that came along to like my ph photography collective for a while. So it tended to be young people that I knew that, that I would um, photograph with, that there was some kind of previous relationship. Is the key significant um, here in that image? Not really at all. No, she just had a key around her neck. I, I, I actually, I don't even think I asked her. <laughs> what it was for. I guess maybe it's just like a front door key. You know, some people wear a front door key around their neck, don't they? Um, but yeah, it didn't come up, but but visually it works really well in terms of like a, a point of interest. Um, yeah, sometimes things are just, again, just, you know, happy, happy coincidences. Um, and I did take some pictures of Ruby in a kind of really dark background, but then I ended up liking this kind of, this sort of out of focus wooded, background worked worked much better for me and this is the, the image that I obviously talked a bit about earlier so Daisy had photographed with previously the early days of Durlscum when it was going to become something else I'd photograph with her and she just was kind of loosely connected to some of the young people in my collective kind of like a weird one like she'd been following me on Tumblr remember Tumblr uh, oh, yeah. And then I put the two and two together that she knew some people that I knew. So, and, and I would photograph it for that. And then when this idea came up, I talked to her about it. And when she said, and that, and she had a boyfriend at the time, well, so said, it, would he be good, fine, like to, to, to meet up? And she's like, yeah. And, and so we met like on a really kind of bleak midwinter's day with one of their friends' properties. I guess it was his parents' property. They're this kind of like, farm in the middle of nowhere in Devon and, and he had like a big tree platform which is also in the book that was kind of what drew me in and then this was just like a kind of sort of almost semi-abandoned van kind of on their land where they were just sat and I started taking some pictures so so again we like spent the whole day together hanging out and chatting and you know and that's how that came together and, and this is Princetown Prison which is on Dartmoor and this would have been like an outtake from a, an editorial commission I had for the the Telegraph magazine, which is like a newspaper in, in, in the UK. So this is another kind of sort of borrowed image, which I had used for that, but worked really well in terms of the context of the island. Um, this is over on actually on Portland Island, which is like a small island off the county of Dorset in England, which is the county next to Devon. And I'd been here several times because the place really interested me. And there was some genesis with this place in the notion of the island. So the idea of the island I had before the Brexit vote. So I was here thinking about making some work or working on a project because it was part of England, but it felt slightly other, slightly separate. There were lots of quarries there, a couple of prisons. Um, but this was an image that I made after... The, the Brexit vote, and I went back to the island to to specifically take pictures. You're thinking about the Brexit vote, and uh, it, for for someone that um, is on the outside looking in, 
how did that uh, i'm sure there's different viewpoints on it uh what viewpoint were you exploring here like was this significant did it feel like you got uh, that uh, what what exactly were you tapping into here as far as the feeling yeah so i mean it's it a hugely complicated thing you know and, and, and yeah. why it happened it's so layered and you know the easiest thing in a way in a project would be to make a really condescending work about the kind of people that have this little Britain mentality. I mean, I grew up in the Midlands, which is a very little Britain mentality, like our country in general, you know, not everyone. Um, it, in, in a way, I'm, I'm maybe slight, well, I'm definitely, I'm definitely more judgmental as a person than as a kind of image maker, as an artist. I don't, sure. I don't want to like attack people or, or make, a kind of negative statement specifically about people. So it is political, but, you know, and in, in the, the text, there's a little bit about that. I talked about that little like the idea of Little Britain. Um, but, you know, I can also understand why people voted for Brexit, this feeling of kind of um, lack of power, um, completely disenfranchised, you, you know, like, living really tough lives, you know, like low paid jobs. I can completely understand how that happened, you know, because I kind of, you know, I'm, I'm from like, I guess, was a relatively privileged background, like a middle class background. Both my parents were teachers, but we weren't exactly, you know, well off, you know, we were okay. Um, but, you know, I was educated so I had the, the kind of benefit of that education, but, you know, I worked lots of kind of low paid jobs. And, and really right up until now, I was in kind of zero hours kind of jobs and, and kind of am still actually, to be honest, but, you know, they're just better pay because they're slightly more professional in terms of lecturing. But, you know, I don't have contracts or anything. So I'm still, I suppose I'm still a bit in that, but anyway, I'm, I'm digressing. Um, but, but what I didn't want to do is I didn't want to make this kind of judgmental work, a kind of well, this is my feelings, this is my response. I feel heavy. This feels like a complete misstep. And actually more than heavy, I was really angry. Do you know what I mean? There was a lot of anger there as well. But I, I channeled the energy into the heaviness rather than the the kind of anger. Um, and you can you can see it like the the kind of now it's a it's a complete disaster. And you know, a lot of people that vote for it are like, well, I wouldn't vote for it now. Um, you know, Certain politicians are like, well, you did it wrong. You, you didn't do it right. Where it's like, well, there's no right way to do it. You know, you cutting yourself off from you, your biggest market in terms of in terms of trade, and even from my point of view, you know, is a kind of you're selling books, you posting out into Europe, and unfortunately, everyone has to pay import duties now. Whereas before, there was just this open flow between all the countries. So, you know, I can't imagine any kind of small to medium business in this country just can't really deal with anyone in Europe anymore. They can't do business with them. It's just crazy. It's like an absolute, you know, like a lot of the cartoons where at the time it's just like shooting yourself in the foot. It's like ridiculous. Um, but yeah, that kind of, that kind of like what, you know, I didn't necessarily want to translate into it. I wanted that kind of heaviness, you know, that kind of like, well, wow, this is, this is a mistake. Well, did, that, did that lead into the name, the island? It's it, you could you could almost use that as a metaphor itself, you know. Yeah. Uh, some people yeah. say, "Well, you're putting yourself out on an island." You know what I mean? Separating yourself from the world. You know, is is that yeah, what yeah. inspired the, the title? I, I think a bit. I mean, I had the notion, I had the title of the island anyway because of this place, Portland Island. But especially because England is an island, and sometimes mm. like. The, even the politicians just lose sight of that because you get so like, this is our place. This is, this is where we are. I think it was, it's maybe like Dominic Ram, one of the uh, politician here. And, and during the whole Brexit process, it was literally a statement from him where he'd overlooked the importance of Dover because everything that comes here has to come in through the bloody poor. Do you know what I mean? Like everything has to be shipped. You know, it's like, Almost just forgetting that is just you know insane, but it's it's that kind of mentality that you feel like well this is everything, you know this is this is gotcha. all this is all. Um, so the, the island makes definitely makes sense, and then latterly, 
we had COVID, you know, the UK was described as plague island in some kind of articles because at the time, you know, Boris just wanted to let the, the virus run run wild. Um, yeah. So, you know, there's, from my point of view, there's, there's lots, again, going on in this work. But, yeah, the the, the predominant feeling I wanted to, to get across was this kind of sort of heaviness, kind of moving into something that was, almost a bit kind of creepy or a bit horror like the horror of everything and, and in a weird way it was a kind of without me seeing it like a sort of precursor to COVID you know what we all kind of live through that sort of isolation and separation and all the lockdowns um, but obviously I you know couldn't have predicted that so talk to me a little bit about uh, how you translated this into a book and uh did you know i i've seen this work through the book i'm sure you've done a show uh, talk to me a little bit about how you see this in the world do you do you do you see it book also exhibition to, let's make that that connection to um yeah i mean predominantly i make work in the context of books that's kind of what interests me the most Again, like my kind of slightly simplistic head heart, I will use another slightly simplistic in terms of introvert, extrovert. So as an introvert, a book is great. It's like I made this thing. It's my, you know, it's, it's, it's my work. But you can buy it and you can look at it in your own space, in your own time, and you can enjoy it if you enjoy it. You know, if you don't like it, you don't like it. You know, you can... It's this thing and you can have it, but I don't need to be involved with it. Whereas an exhibition to me is very much like, you know, this is me, this is my work on the wall. It's like a kind of peacock thing. I'll send out people invita invitations to come along, like a kind of big celebration. And it's like, you know, look at me, look at me. And again, it's quite a simplistic thing, but I think for me, books work better in that context. And also that, you know, there's, there's, quite often like a narrative to my work, like a flow to it. You can include all the images in a book. You know, obviously people can open the book at whatever page they want, but there is a way that the images are sequenced and ordered, sometimes harder to do an exhibition in an exhibition. Um, so it's not that I don't like exhibitions. It's just for me, I feel like the book is is the, the better kind of, um, um, the better not vehicle, but, but yeah, the better way of showing, of showing work. And, and it just came together really nicely. It was the first time I worked with a, um, on self published work worked with a designer, um, and, and Tom did a really great job, I think in terms of the, the design and, and, and the printing. And, and that was really kind of helpful because it was an area where I don't feel like I'm as skilled in. So it was really good to kind of pass that off to someone else obviously we had lots of discussions about the design it you know it was, it was you know in a way he led that but there was it was collaborative it wasn't kind of like i'm doing this and and that's it so there was you know i'm probably slightly annoying and maybe quite controlled <laughs> in terms of that i have an idea of how something should be there was you know a lot of discussion around the front cover um he, he maybe originally wanted like a different image but from my point of view, like, I feel like, you know, everyone does always judge a book by its cover and the front cover has got to be this kind of strong standout image that kind of like says what the work's about. You know, you need kind of like a very basic sort of advertising way. Um, and it was an image that it didn't work for me in the context of the series, but, you, you know, I kind of look back at it and it, and it worked really well the crop of it for the cover and then having the, 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 the wraparound. Um, so yeah, so it was from my point of view, like a really good, yeah, good experience. The book is a nice size. It's, um, yeah, it's a, it's a very nice size and, and it's, and it lends well to photography. You know, there's yeah. sometimes the size doesn't, um, um, uh, you, you know, sometimes they're small and some sure. images are great for that, but for these images, there's, you do such a great job of burying certain things in and um, you, you always like to, there's this one image where you have this uh, uh, house and it looks like there's a boat in the yard. There's a lot of 
uh, tree limbs everywhere. It's yeah. It's um, uh, it it for for a kind of image like that, it, this lends itself well um, to the size. And I, I I just I thought it was a fantastic book, and oh, uh, it's just uh, it's really really interesting um, um, what you said there that you you think about books first, and and then you know it's it's not as if you don't like an exhibition. It, it has its own purpose, but. But you're you, there. It is again. You're telling us a story. You're you're taking us on a journey with your images, and uh, it's it's kind of unfolding through portraiture, through landscape, and and so on. And so, like I'm, um, uh, I really liked it. I really enjoyed it, and I love the background um, uh, that you gave us around Brexit. And uh, kind of that feeling um, when you did this work, it, you know, did, did you find a lot of people that related to the way you felt yeah. about this? Did, did you find uh, uh, people really resonated with the work? How, what was the reception like uh, to the project? Uh, yeah, I think I think so, because if you I suppose if you think that the, the vote was very close, it was like 52, 48. So a lot of people didn't want this to happen. And that was even before we've experienced um, Brexit in all its glory. I mean, I didn't even, don't even really like saying the, the B word, the Brexit word, because it's just an annoying word. Um, so, yeah, so the, I think that's helpful. That it's such a big thing that's happened that people are going to resonate with the, the, the atmosphere and the feeling and, and the mood. But, but what I really like is when... The, the stuff that, that is embedded in there for me, from my kind of psyche, kind of going back to my past in terms of music. And there's a photographer in Germany that bought the book and read a review and, and, and kind of corresponded a little bit with me. And, and, and she said, oh, it reminds me of like when Swade was singing about the beautiful ones. And it's like, well, yeah, amazing. It's for me like Swade's in there, like Saturday night and beautiful ones, all that kind of music from, from that period. Did you know what I mean? There's something about the something sometimes that you're translating in the work that's not necessarily spoken about, but it's kind of there, and that that kind of really interests me when people pick up on something that's very specific. It's not oh, yeah. even kind of like just in the work that that it resonates with them, or that it can resonate with someone that's not from the UK, or you know, again, it's it's levels. You know, you can respond to it in 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 various different ways i think that's the kind of beauty really of, of photography and i don't know working on a project and and i actually you know i really love that when people drop me a message or say i really love this or really like that it's kind of like wow you know in terms of my life arc from those dark days of being ill is you know like the, the life experience now in a lot of ways just feels insanely surreal you know like some of the exhibitions oh, yeah. i've been in or some of the people that have supported me it's just like what you know how is how how did this happen you know so that that feels kind of crazy really that's sort of you know how that's how that's happened you know 